All right, welcome. This is Bobby from Vagabond Insider. This will be my first video ever, but not going to be the last because I think most posts will be videos from now on. And our my well, our first post will be about saving money on flights, hotels, and cars. So, I have a seminar this weekend that I was notified about a week ago, and a it's about it's a five thousand dollar guru management summit, and I get in for free. Lucky me! It's this weekend, literally two days away. And then last night I made hotel, flight, and parking arrangements. And I'm sure a lot of people realize this. It's just sometimes you can make a big savings if you have hotels plus flight plus cars. All I'm going to do is hotels plus a flight, and I saved at least a hundred dollars or more on just combining those when I looked at the hotels on different websites. So I just want to be able to help you just be able to find those last minute deals that, you know, sometimes you can save lots of money instead of being, you know, like beaten in the ass for doing it last minute. And of course you got to realize certain days and times are cheaper than others, like Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Saturdays. And people find that the most expensive is usually Mondays and Fridays is because that's when the business people leave home and that's when the business people come back on Fridays. So there's the most busy times for business and airports all together on those dates. And then the cheapest time to travel is evenings usually. Uh, it's usually consistent on the carriers such as Southwest or JetBlue, but on some other carriers, if you look at those booking sites, you'll find that it is cheaper in the evening on every day except for Friday and Sunday because Friday that's when the people come back and Sunday that's actually a lot of times when a lot of people come back as well from their trips and they can be there for work on Monday. So just keep that in mind when you're looking for something. And of course booking in advance saves a ton of money. And I knew about this seminar about a week ago. I got an email saying, hey, you're invited to the seminar. You know, this is like last minute travel arrangement. See if you can make it or not. You're gonna learn a lot of great stuff if you come out to the seminar. We really like you to come. So and I procrastinated for a whole week just because I thought I didn't want to go and didn't want to spend like four or five hundred dollars to go to a seminar for two days. But I realized that a seminar like that will teach me more and save me hundreds, maybe even millions of dollars in managing my business and other things. So, of course, not all travel arrangements can be planned out, but if you can, definitely do it. And in this situation, procrastination was my closest friend. Though, I'm lucky that I researched around, checked things out, and got a good deal. So there's a few different ways to get a flight in a hotel, maybe even a car. And a lot of people think travel agents are more expensive because they have a commission. But if you think about booking sites, those places have commission as well. And of course, they can find better deals for you, but not always. And, you know, airlines can always increase fares at certain times for booking sites just because that's when someone's searching for it. So, of course, you got to try different times of the day when you're looking as well. And I definitely would recommend trying a travel agent to a place that you don't know anything about. They can help you find places and things that you would never have found out before. And they can get you special deals if they're like the travel agent for that place. So, if like you want to go visit an island and they have like one travel agent. You're better off talking to that travel agent than going through the airports and airlines and stuff trying to figure out, hey, what, where should I stay? What, I, what do I do? The travel agents can really, really help you. So keep that in mind when you look for a place because if you really, really work with them and give them repeat business and customers, they will give you the best deal they can because they know that you will help them a lot by you know, booking with them and by referring people to them. So definitely try them out. And you can, of course, try a lot of different booking websites and the actual sites of airlines as well. Sometimes those are better, the actual websites. Sometimes they're not. That's why booking sites are very popular because you know, there's just tons of stuff on those booking sites that you know, airlines don't have. So where do you look? Well, there's a lot of places, and I'm listing a lot of them here on this page and the next page. But Kayak is my favorite for one of many reasons, especially since I didn't close that apostrophe or parentheses, and uh, they just have like a great way to look for things. You can look for the closest cities of a place and closest cities to other places. So maybe you're flying out from California, 
there was like four airports in one area. San Jose, San Francisco, Oakland, and Sacramento. If you fly out from any of those four, you might save a lot of money going to one of those. Might be a little more driving time if you're in the middle. But it'll work out where you might save $100 or $200, which could be worth more than how much you get paid per hour. So keep that in mind. Try them out. You can also just like see what the cheapest fares are or plan last-minute things. And this is where I found my fare to LAX, which is Los Angeles. And cheap tickets is what Kayak referred me to to get it. That's where I got my hotel combination, and I saved myself a good like $100 on this last-minute flight. There's also Expedia, Orbitz. And Travelocity, Priceline, Hotwire. Priceline, you'll name your, you name your thing. And Hotwire is pretty good, too. Doesn't, doesn't always find the best deals. But try a lot of them out. And even Kayak allows you to open up four different other websites to see what they give you for that set search you're looking for. And then, of course, if you're in the USA, some places are great to fly on Southwest and JetBlue. Southwest being my favorite airline just because they're you know awesome guys. So keep that in mind. And then you will definitely want to check out reviews of hotels. I would recommend staying at hostels as well if you're not if you're more flexible. Um, I'm not in this situation. I don't want to get a car, and the place that I'm going to is right next to the airport, so I'm just going to stay in a place next to it that's cheaper. So Hotel.com is pretty good. I use that to find a lot of hotels and find out that you know I don't want to stay at certain places. Hostels.com is a great place as well. A lot of reviews. Hostelsworld.com as well. And Couchsurfing.org is a little different. You find a host family who will host you. And they might host you for maybe for not a family, maybe a person for a day or two. And you could have shown around by local people and do whatever. You know, arrangements that are always the same. But if you find some really cool people, they'll insist you come out and eat with them. Or they'll cook you food and insist you eat with them and not clean up and not do any of that stuff. But you do your best to... Help them out as much as you can while you're there. You know, offer your help and do whatever. But couch surfing is different. Literally, is couch surfing, or you know, if they have an extra room, you stay in their extra room. So, I would definitely recommend checking that out. And then for cars, a lot of those websites I mentioned before, they also include cars as well. And if you have a special credit card, beware of upgrades that you have. Like I just got the American Express Platinum, so I can get this airport access and everything. So. Another thing you need to plan out as well is parking at the airport. So plan out your parking arrangements ahead of time. To find places near the airport, you know, you just search on Google city slash airport parking. So I looked up San Francisco airport parking, found a place called Sky Park. And they were cheaper than the San Francisco place because, well, this is $33 a day at San Francisco. And with my AAA membership, I get a $12 a day um, parking fee. So I saved, what? 30 something dollars, 40 dollars or something. And so keep your, keep in mind your AAA membership will help you with hotels and parking as well. So keep that in mind. And they offer they also offer a shuttle. So if you're worried about being late, show up a little bit early. And they are, a lot of these places offer shuttles every five, three to five minutes. So you won't be late as long as you, you know, show up early at the airport. And then, pretty much the summary from Vagabond Insider, which is me, Bobby, is to shop around. If you can plan ahead, do it. Look at reviews for hotels. You really will thank yourself later when you find out that you don't like cockroaches. And plan out parking arrangements. If you have someone dropping you off, great. But I find that really, really annoys people, especially me. When people ask me, hey, can you take me to the airport? When, you know, they're going to be gone for a couple days, they could just drive and pay for parking like $5 a day at some places. That's just me, you know. But I'll still do it for like a lover or whatever, and I'm not gonna feel bad about it. I love doing that for them because it saves them money, and I get to spend some time with them before they leave. So plan out your parking arrangements because it will help you save a lot of money if you don't park at the airports. They're very expensive. Another thing, you know, have fun on your trip. Whatever trip you're going on, just have fun. I'm going out to a seminar. I'm gonna have a blast out there. Meet a lot of great people and really, really learn how to manage my business and myself in this seminar. All right, that, thank you again for checking out my video, very first video ever. All right, have a good day, and expect some more great content in the future.